Okay, hey everybody. Uh, this is the change log for update 2.9. Now, the first thing is a lot of improvements on the performance because of the skid. Now you can see the skid, the, the smoke is pretty similar to what we had before, although it looks a little bit better if you ask me. Uh, the big thing is I actually incorporated that smoke into the drift mark. All right. So you now have a drift mark emitter for the grass, which is this. this brownish skid mark and you have another one for the road which is this and it has smoke into it all right so that's that and uh, what improvement that did is that now I don't have to spawn the smoke emitter separately every uh, 0 0.05 seconds, which is 20 times a second. Now that happens, you know, when I move the skid mark emitter, the smoke follows, which is good. So that's one less thing to do in the timer. And because of that, I saved a lot of performance. You know, before I was at an average of 45 FPS, well, maybe 50. And when I started drifting, because of all the smoke emitters, I was actually going down to 25. So that, that was a huge hit on performance, especially with multiple cars on the map. So that is fixed. Much better performance. And uh, I'm still going to improve the blueprint more so in the future it'll be even better the other thing I did is on to the AI as you can see I handle the inputs on even tick using variables but now those variables all the calculations are executed on a timer which is only triggering twice a second so instead of doing all those crazy expansive calculations every tick I only do them twice a second and then update the variable that I use to you know handle the input to the vehicle so that's another big performance improvement right there <clears throat> now what else oh yeah the uh, steering speed before it was using you know the wheel speed to slow down the steering speed so you couldn't steer so fast at high speed and lose control it's a part of driver assistance for keyboard user now i use linear velocity converted to kilometers per hour instead of using the wheel speed so that the overspinning won't false that calculation so what happens is when you do donuts So what happens is when you do donuts, the steering is much more responsive. You know, you get a lot more control over the steering because even though the wheels are turning at 140 kilometers per hour, the vehicle really is moving only 30 kilometers per hour. So that little change allowed for much better control over the, the drifting, basically, which is good. <laughs> uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh yeah. This update is also going to contain everything you've seen in the last videos, which include the uh, obstacle avoidance for the vehicle AI, the uh, slight camera changes that makes it so that when you're inside the vehicle and moving the camera, the, the function is going to wait for you to not input any mouse movement for at least one second before it springs back to 
looking like this. So you can actually look around and you don't have to keep moving the mouse all the time to fight the, the, the finter, really. That's bringing the camera back into position. So it's now much easier to just look around and let it spring back on its own. The other thing is mouse steering, which you have to go into the blueprint, your vehicle blueprint, and enable here, mouse for steering. If you enable that, you won't be able to look around using the camera, but the mouse buttons, left, right, and middle, the mouse wheel, are going to rotate the camera around the vehicle. So left mouse button, right mouse button, and mouse wheel. All right, and you now use, you now basically move the mouse left and right for the steering. So you control the speed and the angle of the steering. <clears throat> And of course, as you can see, the wheels don't spring back to forward, right? You have to move the mouse to make them straight again. So you really, again, don't have to fight with the wheels to keep the angle you want, which gives you so much more control over the vehicle. Again, really good for drifting games, where you have to have the exact angle to be able to control the drifts really good. And that's pretty much the same input you would set up for a you know, physical steering wheel, like the, the Logitech. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's, it's really cool. And as you can see, the particle for skidding changes itself when the wheel changes surface. So you don't have to worry about that. I noticed it didn't before, so I fixed it. And this is it. It's a tiny update. I wasn't quite ready to, you know, push the update. But then I discovered I could massively improve the performance. So that's totally worth dating. So that's that. I'll keep working on the uh, performance, by the way. As I said, I'm gonna move a lot of stuff from Evan Tick to timers. You know, basically heavy calculations that can be executed twice a second instead of 60 without changing anything. I'll do that. So yeah. And uh, I think that's it. So, by the way, just so you know, you won't have the Ferrari in the project, because that's my 3D model. I don't send it to you, you're still only going to have the Camaro. So don't, don't be too surprised, alright? <laughs> oh, and by the way, that's right, I wanted to uh, show you the rubber banding I was talking about in Discord. Check this out. See? This time it wasn't bad. So you could totally see the wheel kind of getting stuck on the collision. Because the physics engine is not so great with tiny little collisions like that. Now the only way to reproduce that every single time consistently is to make it a 5x5 five five collision. If you make it 10x10, 10 10, it won't rubber bend. But 5x5 five five is so small, it actually bugs the collision. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it just happens. 
So you have to keep that in mind until I find a fix for that. To prevent rubber bending at high speed, you have to make sure your obstacle or, you know, a reasonable size. See if I make it 10 by 10. It won't rubber bend. Or at least it shouldn't. It's probably going to rubber bend just because I said it wouldn't, but, you know. Yeah, as I thought. Yeah. So, you know, just be careful with super sharp edges that are like way, so way smaller than the wheels. Because it's going to cause collision glitches like that. Which I'm really hoping I'm going to find a way to fix. Actually, I did some testing around with that. I got a few ideas I had to try out, so keep an eye open for that. It just might get fixed in the next update. I don't know. And so, yeah, this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And by the way, I'll post a link again in the description to go to the forum and download that. And I'll also post a link to my Discord server. So for those of you who aren't on it yet, you just have to click the link, accept the invite, and you can chat with me and other people who enjoy the Physic Vehicle Project. You know, ask a bunch of questions, make requests, or, you know. So yeah, looking forward to talking to you guys there. And I'll see you next time.